Welcome to my unboxing and first look at a genuine Intel desktop board. Okay, that's good. This is Extreme Series Optimized for Intel K processors. So this is an Extreme Series board and it's optimized for Intel K processors because this is an LGA 1155 board, which means that you don't have support for Intel Extreme Edition processors on LGA 2011. The D77RE-75K has a bunch of cool stuff. So number one is an Extreme board, supports Intel Core i7, i5, and i3, highly optimized for K processors, which means overclocking friendly, yay. Intel Visual BIOS, which means UEFI BIOS, PCI Express 3.0, LGA 1155 processor support, NVIDIA SLI technology, AMD Crossfire X technology. Look at that, it's AMD logo on an Intel product. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, <laughs> Lucid Virtue MVP virtualization for improved performance, as well as the ability to use the onboard video for quick sync and your dedicated graphics card for gaming. And what else do we want to talk about? Oh yeah, it has Thunderbolt, which is boss. So transformational high-speed dual protocol. Man, you know, Intel has like the boringest way of talking about like the coolest stuff sometimes. No offense, guys, but... <sighs> transformational high-speed dual protocol PCIO, delivering performance, simplicity, and flexibility. Fastest IO connection to your PC. What they really mean is like beastly Thunderbolt technology for like the fastest daisy chaining awesomeness. And uh, that's what they were trying to say. Latest responsiveness technology. Ah, Intel Smart Response Technology with SSD caching, Intel Rapid Start, so you can quickly start up your PC and Intel Smart Connect technologies are all present. Power Supervisor, oh, that's neat. So monitor, ensure system protection from power supply failure, current surge and overcurrent protection. In the event of power spikes and power dues, the Power Supervisor will shut the power off. That's really cool. So they're building in like a uh, like breakers almost on the board by the sounds of things, which is really neat. I mean, one of the biggest risks to a PC in general is if, you know, there's a power problem of some sort and your power supply explodes, which is inconvenient and expensive because you got to get a new one, but it can also be a total disaster because it can take other stuff with it at the same time. So Intel has thought of that and decided that they don't really want that to happen. And there's, oh, custom SLI bridge. Love it. Look at that, blue connectors. I don't have one like this. I'm like totally pocketing this. Done. Intel mouse pad. Intel has awesome swag that comes with their products. Check this out. I still have this from, uh, this was back like some extreme edition LGA 775 board. Warning, noobs beware, you will be pwned. Love it. Actually, it might have come with, uh, what was that board? Skull Trail or something? The one that was dual socket? Yeah, that was the one. Extreme desktop boards. Sweet mouse pad. Actually feels reasonably nice. Got nice grippiness on the back. Very cool. We've also got, oh, look at that. A front USB 3. So internal header to front three and a half inch drive with uh, two USB 3.0 connectors. And it's pretty nice, like it's brushed metal, it's not plastic, like some of the ones that I've seen included with other boards. Very nice, I mean, that's the thing about Intel, is it might be a little bit more expensive, but they tend to get some of the finishing touches right. And I say some, because these are red SATA cables, and that's just tragic. Okay, moving right along. Oh, neat! So they include a an external, I think this is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but let me just double check before I go and you know get ahead of myself here. Includes Bluetooth 2.1 Wi-Fi BGN module, so that's very very neat. And they also include a cable to connect it. So this probably plugs in. Where on earth does this? No way! It's internal. Oh, that's cool. So you can probably use this on anything. It's just USB. Look at that internal USB plug to internal USB header, and you just stick it somewhere to the inside of your case discreetly. Very nice. And this is even pretty easy to sleeve as well. So you could uh, sleeve it black, and it'd look really good. Color coded I/O shield. Summary of, ah, oh, summary of postcodes. Very nice. Love it when they include a post readout. Love it even more when they actually tell you what they mean. Driver disk, throw it away. Integration guide. In color. Oh, in color, how to build your PC. Very nice. There you go. And you can tell, like, a team of people worked on anything that Intel releases, so. Little quick guide to all the different various front panel connectors. Processor compatibility, yeah, okay, LGA 1155, and some maximum ownage razor thing. Okay, cool. Moving on to the board itself. 
Intel has really figured out the aesthetics of their boards ever since LG A775, I think, and they've, this whole, like, skull theme thing that they've got going on, I think, looks really good. It's a lot better than, like, guns and bullets and stuff like that. It's got, like, you know, like a silvery sort of stylized look to it. It goes really, really well with the dark blue. Love silver and dark blue as far as color schemes go, and I'm not going to gush too much about how good looking this board is, but it's, it's good looking without being sort of overly flashy and kind of silly. So all solid state caps all over the entire board there's no uh, no liquid caps including the power delivery as well as every other component on the board there's the LGA 1155 socket with a lot of room around it which is great if you have a large aftermarket cooler your 8 pin power connectors in its ideal location on the left you've got support for dual channel DDR3 memory up to uh, probably 64 gigs would be would be my guess but uh, we'll see it depends on uh, it depends on dim availability over the next little bit. You can at least put uh, you can at least put 32 gigs in today. 24 pen power connectors and its ideal location along the right hand edge. Onboard power and reset buttons. Very, very nice. We've got SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports off the Intel chipset. SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports and it's very rare for Intel to include like a third-party chipset but they've got a Marvel chipset providing two more SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Wow. Front I.O. I consider this to be the ideal location for front I.O. I really like this. I don't really like it when they put it over here because your front I.O. is always there and never somewhere else. And you're always using it. You know, it's not like USB 2 where there's a chance you won't be using it. Um, okay, so there's three front panel USB 2 ports, two front panel USB 3 ports, spit if out, as well as front panel... Oh, look at that! Front panel firewire! Nice to still see that. Where's the front panel audio, though? There it is! He. Okay, expansion slots. We've got seven. Love seeing boards with seven expansion slots because what that means to someone like me is that they put the effort in to make sure that uh, they were filling up all of the space and giving you as much expansion as they possibly can. So these will run in either 16x or 8x, 8x mode, PCI Express 3.0, one, two, three PCIe 1x slots and two PCI slots. If you're using two dual slot graphics cards, you'll be left with two PCIe 1x and one PCI slot. I consider this to be a very good mix. Good on you, Intel. All right, uh, let, oh, yeah, let's have a look at fan headers. So we've got one, two, three, four PWM, fan connectors on the board. Um, the locations aren't as perfect as I'd like. I'd like to see more fan headers sort of around here because otherwise there's not really much to connect your front fans to. Uh, top fans, can, so CPU fan, top fan, rear fan, and this is sort of in no man's land. I'd like to see a couple up here instead, but it's not the end of the world. On the back, we've got four USB 2.0 connectors, a PS2 connector, Firewire, eSATA. I'm going to have to find out what that is. Uh, dual Intel Gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3.0, HDMI, as well as, oh, that must be the, uh, must be Thunderbolt. It just looks funny. No, it's not. No, there it is. Yeah, we'll find out what that is. It's probably a clear CMOS switch, though. HDMI, 7.1 audio out, optical audio out, and a Thunderbolt connector. So give me a sec, guys. So yeah, basically this will, when you illuminate this, it'll get you back to the BIOS at default settings, which is basically a clear CMOS switch, but not quite. However, this is a clear CMOS jumper, so you just go ahead and flip that over in order to clear the CMOS. I think that pretty much covers it, although it does have a couple of, uh, yeah, a couple of interesting software bits that are included, including McAfee, ESET Smart Security. This is neat. Splash Top Remote Desktop is included. Although there's like an asterisk, so I don't know, other names and brands, etc. Lap link PC mover, and you can monitor PC health with the Intel desktop utility. Neat stuff. So, what's the point? Pretty much everything you need in terms of I.O. I was wrong, it's 32 gigs max, by the way. Everything you need in terms of I.O., every feature you could possibly ask for, including the latest Thunderbolt technology, SLI, Crossfire, all that good stuff. And, I mean, it's built by Intel, so, like... You know, realistically, it's got a three-year warranty, but if it's not working ten years from now, I'll be very surprised. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the D77RE75K from Intel. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And how exactly am I going to put this motherboard in this box? Hey, you're in my spot.